Okay, then look. Everyone look happy. <laughs> okay. So let me see. I Hey, welcome everyone back to our Azure Stack Partner Solution video series. Again, I'm happy to have Tibby from the Azure Stack Hub team with me. Um, Tibby, with who are we gonna talk today? Hello, Thomas. Hello, everyone. Um, today, we're gonna talk with a uh, partner in uh, from uh, Tunisia um, that's been a partner of Azure Stack Hub from the early days. Um, they've been part of the, the initial um, uh, initiatives as well. And as we've discussed before in this series, we are focusing on the Azure Stack Hub uh, partner solutions. Uh, these solutions range from um, direct uh, platforms, meaning consumers from inside the company that deploy the applications on top of Azure Stack Hub but also um, uh, actual end customers that are resold by the partners. So CSPs that host the Azure Stack Hubs and then sell these as services to their customers. Um, RFC has an interesting uh, story where they have both models and they have a mixture of both managed services as well as hosting services and they partner with ISVs as well. Um, I don't want to get too much into details. Iman will uh, go through uh, the their journey and how they started and what their value add is uh, for this. Oh, no, that sounds awesome. I'm really looking forward to talk to Ayman and I will directly switch to him now. Hey, Ayman, nice to talk to you. Uh, I, JB just told me a little bit about your story and about your background, uh, but can you introduce yourself and RFC a little bit more uh, for our viewers. Uh, thank you, Thomas. Uh, thank you, Tebi, for having me in this uh, video series. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Ayman Mami. I'm uh, in charge of uh, technical sales at uh, RFC. Uh, RFC is a Microsoft uh, partner uh, based in Tunisia. For 15 years now, we have been a gold partner uh, with Microsoft uh, on uh, multiple competencies. We hold uh, uh, 11 gold competency and the three silver one. Uh, we have been a partner with Microsoft on the virtualization uh, solution since 2008. Then uh, with the um, uh, Windows Azure Pack, we have um, deployed it uh, a couple times. And uh, after that, uh, with um, Azure Stack, since uh, it was uh, been launched. So uh, we are a very close partner uh, with Microsoft on the North African region. And uh, we uh, work uh, with uh, Azure Stack on uh, multiple uh, solutions. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I remember the good times we had with Windows Azure Pack and then the transition to Azure Stack uh, Hub and so on. So now that's a really interesting journey. Um, can you tell us a little bit more what kind of clients you're working with, what kind of like customers uh, you have and like the use cases? Uh, sure. Uh, actually, we have uh, two types of uh, offering based on the Azure Stack Hub um, solution. We have uh, the dedicated uh, Azure Stack offering where we sell uh, an Azure Stack platform with our um, OEM partner, uh, Cisco. And uh, we deployed uh, with uh, Cisco Advanced Services. We provide after that a managed service uh, around uh, patching, configuring the, um, <clears throat> the plans and offering uh, in the Azure Stack. We also uh, support uh, the end customer uh, um, to uh, learn how to use the, the, the stack. And uh, we have uh, some partnerships with um, ISVs that uh, provide uh, um, application on top of the stack in a uh, SaaS uh, model. So uh, our um, first, let's say, biggest customer in this model is uh, the government of uh, Tunisia, uh, who decided to deploy um, a solution called Elise. Uh, Elise is um, a document management solution from a company called Neoledge, also a Microsoft uh, partner. Uh, they actually uh, have been uh, nominated uh, partner of the year in 2019 in Tunisia for this uh, project. And this project consists of a digital transformation of the Tunisian government, so eGov initiative. 
to uh, um, allow or to provide all ministries of uh, the government and also administration to exchange documents between them, uh, digitally signed documents, uh, to have workflows uh, on uh, um, correspondence between uh, ministries. So uh, the solution uh, initially uh, developed on Azure. So, and uh, the government was not, uh, let's say, 100% uh, um, okay on uh, uh, hosting uh, some sensitive uh, data for some ministries and so uh, on the public cloud on Europe or uh, on other region. So they asked uh, if possible to have the same services that uh, uh, you uh, that are used by the the, the Elise solution, but have it on premise. So that's where um, uh, Neoledge team uh, asked Microsoft if they have a partner or someone that could uh, provide Azure services in Tunisia, and that was in 2017, just uh, around the launch of Azure Stack. In the meantime, um, our company, uh, RFC, was discussing with Microsoft team uh, the possibility to have Azure Stack in Tunisia. Uh, since, as you know, Thomas, um, Azure Stack, when launched in July 2017, was not available in all countries. There was a list of uh, authorized countries. And uh, Tunisia was not uh, on the list. So. Um, Actually, it was a very uh, nice um, discussion with Microsoft um, uh, Corporation team uh, in the Inspire uh, meeting. And uh, we were able to work together to get the country, uh, Tunisia, uh, in the list. And we were able to have this Azure stack and propose it to the um, government of Tunisia. Uh, who were very happy because they had everything they needed uh, to uh, have the same architecture that are deployed on Azure, but in their uh, own data center. So that was, let's say, uh, the first um, deployment for uh, Azure Stack uh, in Tunisian uh, territory. Oh, that's awesome. No, that's a very, very interesting story. You have a lot there. And I love that how you described basically bringing Azure into their on-premises location, right, into their data center, um, or basically in your location and hosting hosting the platform and having the same consistent experience as you as you would get with with Azure, right? Um, also, very interesting, by the way, how how you went through the process of making. Uh, Azure Stack available in your country, which is uh, I also very much like, and I'm happy that like you had these conversations at uh, conferences like Inspire, and actually the team worked on this and and it was able to deliver that. Now, very interesting. So, from a technical side uh, and use cases, kind of like why did you decide for like Azure Stack Hub and how does it fit in the overall solution? We already talked a little bit about it, but maybe you can share a little bit more about in the, in the technical sense, how that fits into the, to the picture. The, the solution uh, that we are talking about for the government, the electronic management of documents, relies on uh, scanning the documents. So uh, first of all, uh, it, will, it will be digitally scanned to be introduced into uh, the application. And there uh, we have um, what we call Doc Factory is the name of the, um, the scanning application. The Doc Factory uh, is used with um, uh, not a balanced way. So sometimes it's used uh, very uh, heavily in uh, some hours of the day and uh, in some other uh, timeline it's not used at all. So it was uh, the first architecture, let's say traditional one, it will be uh, deploying uh, 20 or 22 VMs, uh, one for each ministry and it will be, uh, let's say, uh, a loss of resources. So uh, the Azure Stack VM scale set was a very good solution to scale out when there is many uh, users uh, doing the scans and uh, to scale in when there is not much of, uh, of, um, uh, of need for these uh, VMs. So this one of the feature that was used uh, into the architecture. Another feature that also um, very important in this architecture is uh, the Azure Stack uh, uh, Key Vault. And the key vault holds all the crypting um, uh, keys 
for the databases, uh, for the stock files, and uh, for uh, uh, identifying the users. So uh, everything around encrypting the uh, architect, the solution was stored in the Azure Stack Key Vault. And um, uh, this was very important uh, feature uh, in the architecture. Another feature, which is actually, like you uh, said, the consistency with Azure, and it's uh, Azure Resource Manager, which uh, provided uh, the ISV Neoledge here the possibility to use his same scripts, uh, his same RM uh, templates that already uh, developed and validated on Azure to deploy uh, all the solution for 26 ministries uh, in one night. And it was like a very good uh, win on the timeline for the project. And uh, also from uh, uh, resources, uh, uh, human resources perspective. So deploying uh, all this architecture, which is heavy, uh, he uh, heavily um, uh, based on uh, virtual machines, uh, in one night, it was like uh, science fiction, and uh, ARM provided this uh, possibility. Oh, that sounds that sounds really impressive. I, I love that, like how you described uh, the how they could take basically things they used in Azure, right? Like the ARM templates, infrastructure as code, uh, which they basically like used against the Azure cloud, and they were able to use the same basically. Um, templates to like use them on the Azure Stack Hub infrastructure to deploy that, as you said, like basically overnight uh, and obviously saved a lot of time. And I think I'm, I'm sure also the customer was very, very impressed by that. Um, exactly. Speaking of that, um, so obviously since you're in this journey very early on, um, you have a lot of experience uh, with Azure Stack Hub, but also the hybrid journey. Um, I want to ask you, what are, what are your like lessons learned in terms of the whole, um, how, about the whole cloud journey? Uh, okay, uh, thank you, Thomas. Uh, before um, uh, going into the lessons learned, I would like to uh, continue on some uh, another points because we have two uh, ways of providing um, Azure Stack to the customers. Uh, this first offering uh, was dedicated Azure Stack. Like, like we said, we have the Tunisian government. We also have a private group of companies. Uh, it was called the Bayehi Group. And it's 30 plus uh, companies that are um, consolidating all their data centers into uh, Azure and Azure Stack Hub in a hybrid uh, architecture. He, he was also one of the customers where we deployed a dedicated Azure Stack. Uh, we also have an ongoing third project that is still uh, confidential. So this was, let's say, one part of our offering. And before going uh, into uh, your question, I would like to present a second part of our offering, which is our uh, hosted Azure Stack offering as a CSP, uh, service provider. Uh, we have transformed our business from uh, originally uh, system integrator uh, into uh, today service provider using the Azure Stack Hub solution to provide for uh, SMB or corporate uh, customers that do not need a dedicated Azure Stack for them. So we have uh, our own stamp uh, hosted in tier three data center. It's actually the biggest data center in the country. Uh, uh, it's our partner, uh, Dataxion, who holds uh, this um, data center. And from that uh, data center, we provide uh, Azure services in a hybrid mode uh, with Azure, uh, with the customers uh, to provide them the possibility to choose where to deploy their services. If, for example, they have a data warehouse where <clears throat> data are masked and there is no uh, sensible data, they host it on Azure using uh, uh, platform as a service, uh, modern uh, data warehouse services. And if they have, for example, a, a transactional uh, application for banking or uh, um, uh, data that are sensible, they store it uh, and they run it from the Azure stack inside the country. And that offering transformed our company. Uh, now we are uh, more into the service provider business uh, in partnership with the telco providers. Uh, we um, integrated this uh, Azure Stack Hub with the private network, which is called MPLS, 
So the NPLS private network provides the uh, enterprises to access Azure Stack directly from the Tunisian backbone network without going through internet. And uh, that provided a more, uh, let's say, a better latency and also a better bandwidth. So that's one of the advantage of the Azure Stack Hub uh, multi-tenant uh, architecture. <clears throat> we also have uh, another um, partnership, actually three more partnerships that we did to bundle uh, these services with our um, basic Azure Stack uh, services. Uh, one of them is um, <clears throat> Cloud Assert billing uh, solution. Cloud Assert provides us uh, with the pay-as-you-use billing model, so our customers can pay uh, as they use uh, the Azure Hub services with, um, uh, let's say, uh, billing uh, as uh, if they use some services, we have monthly billing, and if they do not use anything, they, we do not bill them uh, anything. So a pay-as-you-use pay model. So that's one of the advantages also uh, that we have. We also have uh, uh, assessment and uh, migration planning service with the current technology, also one of our partners that provide us a uh, surpass uh, application that uh, um, we use for our, what we call Express Migrate um, mission. So Express Migrate is a, a full bundle of uh, service where uh, we do the assessment of the data center of the customer, what they have, what are the challenges that could face him if he migrate to Azure or Azure Stack? What is the TCO of uh, the architecture? Our cloud architects uh, help them uh, into doing the migration plan. So also uh, this provides uh, our customer more visibility when migrating uh, to the cloud. Third uh, partner that also uh, helping us into this uh, multi-tenant architecture is Commvault. And uh, Commvault uh, provides our customer with the possibility to do backup uh, of their uh, Azure Stack services in a self-service uh, way, is a backup as a service offering, and uh, also replicates from the Azure Stack uh, hub, uh, hub stamp from, uh, for to, um, to another uh, Azure Stack or to Azure or uh, to whatever other, um, let's say, uh, location uh, they choose. So uh, this uh, offering for multi-tenancy uh, has uh, been very important into driving uh, our uh, business. So um, I will, um, I just uh, wanted to mention this, uh, Thomas. And uh, that makes a lot of, yeah, that makes yeah. a lot of sense. I, I love the story when like, obviously different partners, like the, the platform with Azure and Azure Stack Hub uh, and different partner solutions are coming to, together to basically then deliver a very nice platform and solution for the, for the actual customer. And I really love that story of like different partners coming together and uh, solving like customer challenges. So what kind of like business impact uh, does Azure Stack Hub have, has for you? RFC is a gold partner with Microsoft on Azure. So we are a, a cloud platform uh, partner. And uh, as a CSP, uh, we resell Azure services and uh, we provide uh, managed services on top of it. But uh, what, we, uh, what was very interesting is that uh, uh, since we started providing these Azure Stack Hub services, we saw that our uh, Azure service and Azure consumption went very uh, high, around 200% more, so like three times the uh, consumption of Azure. And we explained that, that customer actually uh, see in us uh, a very experienced and uh, uh, a partner with many expertise on Azure, on Azure Stack, hybrid Azure. So now uh, not only they choose us for their Azure Stack uh, project, but also they choose us for, our, for their Azure product, uh, uh, projects. And uh, not only uh, choosing the partner, but also um, having this Azure um, hub in the country was an accelerator for their uh, Azure adoption. Uh, before, we had some discussion with customers where they tell us uh, either you take everything to Azure or you don't take anything. And uh, sometimes there is a legal team, they say, oh, this application cannot go to the uh, public cloud. 
So we have all the projects uh, lost and we cannot get the customer uh, to stop investing into the data center. Now with the hybrid architecture, we can actually take everything and remove all servers because uh, we can, uh, let's say mix between Azure Public and Azure Stack Hub and we provide 100% uh, consistent architecture to the customer. So the customer actually agrees and uh, move to the cloud. So yeah, uh, Azure Stack Hub was a very good accelerator of our Azure uh, business. And um, uh, going back to your original question, uh, Thomas, about uh, the lesson learned, the challenges uh, that we faced into our journey. Uh, like I said, we started with Azure Stack since the beginning. And uh, let me say that everything around technical, uh, it can be handled. After all, we have a 50 plus uh, uh, team of uh, experienced engineer and consultant certified on all solution. So um, technical issue have never been, in a, uh, uh, let's say, a blocker. And uh, it's not, let's say, an important part of the journey. The important part in our uh, vision, uh, an important part of the journey is actually the partner, uh, the technology partner uh, who, who you work with. And here uh, we have Microsoft. And uh, let's say that Microsoft has been there for us for over 15 years now, since 2000, 2005. And um, let me tell you something. Uh, Tunisia is a small country. So we are not, let's say, a big market. We are not doing like, uh, for example, our company do $5 million turnover. It's not like a big uh, portion of Microsoft revenue. But the intention and the, let's say the focus that Microsoft provided us uh, to help us first bring the Azure stack to the company, uh, to the country, and also uh, in transforming the, the company business, it's very interesting. And seeing, uh, let's say, key executive uh, from Microsoft Corp talking to us uh, in the Inspire, let's say, lobbies, and uh, when we uh, meet, met with Tiberio and other uh, team member of the Microsoft Corp, they encourage us uh, into going into this Azure Stack business. They follow us very uh, closely and they support us uh, even in our lunch event. There was uh, uh, the general director for the region and there was many uh, Microsoft sales executive present with us in the lunch of this uh, offering. And having Microsoft as a partner um, is the most important thing. Everything around technical, it can be handled uh, if you have a great partner like Microsoft. Oh, okay. And first of all, I'm super happy uh, that this worked out so well and that you really see a strong partner within Microsoft. Uh, and I think, again, the same thing for us. We are a partner-driven company and we need partners like you to obviously work with our customers together um, and help each other there. Um, first of all, that's super impressive story. Uh, thank you for sharing that, especially. And also, like I like that you mentioned that actually it's not really the, the you can really handle technical challenges uh, as long as you work with a great partner. I, I feel like really that's a one a very important part of this story as well. Yes, exactly. Yes, uh, Thomas. And uh, to to close uh, uh, things, uh, uh, of course, uh, we have our website uh, www.rfc.com.tn. We could share uh, the information uh, after uh, the video. There is also my email or our uh, marketing um, address. Uh, if any uh, customer is interested, uh, we also work in France and uh, in Europe uh, uh, for uh, the service part, but mainly our business is uh, in the North African region. Okay, that's awesome. So people, if you want to know more about RFC and what Eamon just shared, we will put down the links in the description so you can find them, you can contact them and, and re talk to them and get like more information on that and hopefully also work with them in the future. With that, I want to say thank you very much, Eamon, for joining us today. I want to say thank you to Tibby. Uh, thank you to all the viewers, and we see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you. Pleasure was mine.